former acting FBI director Andrew McCabe. He chronicles his experience working in the Trump administration in his new book. It's called The Threat, How the FBI Protects America in the Age of Terror and Trump. Director McCabe, good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning, Samantha. We might as well start right there. I, I noticed sure. the title of your book, The Threat, and you say the FBI is protecting America in the age of terror and Trump. Did you mean to relate those two or equate those two or say both are threats? Absolutely. I think the job of protecting America and upholding the Constitution has become tougher for the men and women of the FBI and more broadly for men and women across the intelligence services and our Justice Department. Um, as Do you think it, the president is a threat? Is that what that means? I think it's entirely possible. I think that's one of the reasons why we opened the case against him. I uh, want to talk about that in a moment. Sure. The president has already on Twitter yesterday accused you of illegal and treasonous acts. Your response? Absolutely not true. I don't think um, I don't think really anybody takes those uh, tweets by the president very seriously. I certainly don't at this point. He's been attacking me and my family and lying about us for two years now. So it's just really more of the same. Some Republican lawmakers are saying they'd like to subpoena you. They'd like to see you under oath saying some of the things you say in this book. Will you be willing to do that? Of course. I, I look forward to cooperating with the committee. We haven't received a request yet and we'll certainly um, take a hard look at that and talk to the committee when the time comes. Let's talk about your time as acting FBI director. It happened because Jim Comey was fired by the president. And in the days after that, it's our understanding that an investigation was opened to, into the president, too. One was a criminal investigation into whether he obstructed justice by firing Comey. And secondly, and significantly, that there was a counterintelligence investigation opened into President Trump. Did you open the investigation, the counterintelligence investigation into the president? So a few things to point out there, Savannah. Both purposes are part of the same investigation. This is something I talk about extensively in the book. And the reason is I want Americans to understand how the FBI makes these decisions on when to open cases and who to investigate. It's not because we do it because we like it or we think it's fun or we like don't like a person or are, are, are supporting one political direction or the other. It's because we have facts and information in our possession that gives rise to an articulable basis to believe that a threat to national security or a federal crime may have been committed. Well, let's talk about it. Did you order a counterintelligence investigation into the president? I did. Is that tantamount to saying you felt there was reason to suspect that he was a national security threat? Is that what that means? It is saying that we had information that led us to believe that there might be a threat to national security. In this case, that the president himself might in fact be a threat to the United States national security. And in particular, was it your suspicion and the reason that you opened this investigation that you thought the president might actually be working on behalf of Russia? We had a number of very concerning things that we were considering at the time. One of them was the fact that the president, in our view, had gone to extreme measures to potentially impact, negatively impact, possibly turn off our investigation of Russian meddling into the election and Russian coordination with his campaign. So that goes to his potential motive. But when you're opening this particular kind of investigation, counterintelligence, did you suspect the president might actually be working for Russia? We thought that might be possible. Yes, we thought it might be possible. Now, remember, Savannah, we're at the beginning of an investigation. We don't draw conclusions. We simply look at the facts and the information we have and begin investigations that we but think But as are you point out in your book, the FBI does not start any investigation willy-nilly. What That's were true. the predicate facts? Lay them out here. What were the facts that suggested the president may be a national security threat and may, in fact, be working on behalf of a foreign adversary, Russia. OK, so, Savannah, we have to go back to the investigation of potential collusion between the campaign and Russia. Right. So through the fall, these are topics we've been looking at. During that time, the president has been publicly undermining the investigative efforts. He's talking about it as a witch hunt. He's talking about it as a hoax. So it's clear to us that he's not happy with what we're doing. Also, during that time, the president approaches the director of the FBI and asks him to stop investigating Michael Flynn. A part of our investigation into Russian interference, he asks him to turn off that investigation. Why isn't the that just the, the normal obstruction of justice criminal inquiry, which is substantial enough sure, on its own, but sure. what takes it to 
this next level where there's a suspicion that he's working for a foreign government. I mean, this is extraordinary. Because you have to ask yourself, Savannah, if you believe that the president might have obstructed justice for the purpose of ending our investigation into Russia, you have to ask yourself why. Why would any president of the United States not want the FBI to get to the bottom of Russian interference in our election? I know you and other members of your team briefed the so-called Gang of Eight. These are the leaders of Congress in the days right. after Comey was fired about the Russian investigation. So it would have been the majority leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, and Democratic counterparts. Did you tell them that you had opened a counterintelligence investigation into President Trump? The purpose of the briefing was to let our congressional leadership know exactly what we'd been doing. Opening a case of this nature, not something that an FBI director, not something that an acting FBI director would do by yourself, right? This was a recommendation that came to me from my team. I reviewed it with our lawyers. I discussed it at length Did with the you Deputy tell Attorney Congress? General, and I told Congress what we had done. Did anyone object? That's the important part here, Savannah. No one objected, not on legal grounds, not on constitutional grounds, and not based on the facts. Let's talk about some of the more explosive revelations that are in this book. They have to do with Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General. You write in the book that Rosenstein, I believe on more than one occasion, you say, suggested wearing a wire, that he himself would wear a wire into the Oval Office to record the president. Mm -hmm. Savannah, actually, I don't include that in my book. I made the decision not to put those specific words in the book. I don't discuss the 25th Amendment, the allegations about the 25th Amendment in the book for a really important reason. It's become quite a distraction, a distraction from the points that I am trying to make. In the if book. it happened, it's extraordinary. I, I, I thought you did. I, th I believe I read that you said that you even went to the, the counsel, Jim Baker, the, the general counsel of the FBI, and said, hey, yeah. Rosenstein wants to do this. And he said, I don't think we're there yet. I've been asked about that in interviews. These are things that happen. These are conversations we had. And so, of course, I'm at answering those questions truthfully. So you're saying that Rosenstein did this, suggested yes. wearing a wire. Yeah. Now, there have been news reports that suggest people thought who were in the room, he was joking, like, hey, what do you want me to do, wear a wire? Was it a joke? No, it wasn't a joke. He was deadly serious. You know, you have to remember, Savannah, this came at an incredibly stressful time. And I think the important part of that comment that Rod made and the comment about the 25th Amendment is not, there, were, there was no effort underway. Nobody wore a wire into the White House. Nobody was plotting to, you know, stage a coup or, or remove the president. The point is, the, the stress and the complexity of the issues that we were discussing at the time, the fact that the president of the United States may have committed obstruction of justice for the purpose of impeding our investigation into Russia, that was the big picture issue that we were trying to find our way through. I should mention the Department of Justice and Rosenstein in particular have said that these accounts are factually inaccurate. Um, and, and that brings me actually to an, an issue that you have. You sure. were fired from the FBI and you were fired after the inspector general of the Department of Justice found that you had displayed a lack of candor, which I think is FBI speak for not telling the truth about a story that appeared in the Wall Street Journal and whether or not you authorized a leak of material that was in that article. Why should anyone believe you when you were fired from the FBI for lying? Yeah, there's two reasons. Uh, before the president started publicly attacking me, I enjoyed a 21 year career in the FBI at every level an agent can serve with can serve within the FBI and with absolutely not a single blemish on that career. Second reason, I believe very strongly I was fired because of the steps we've just discussed. I was fired because I opened a case against the president of the United States. I read the inspector general's report. That suggests sure. the inspector general is in on it and firing you for an, basically making up a pretext to fire you. Is that what you're suggesting? Here's what I can tell you. I read that report very, uh, very closely myself. I've been writing and reading investigative reports for over 20 years. And that report was not like anything I have ever read before. An investigative report includes all of the evidence. It includes all of the information, not just those facts that support the conclusion that you'd like to draw. So I have big problems with that report. I disagree with the conclusions they drew. And that is something that I'll be raising in a civil lawsuit that I'll be bringing against the Department of Justice. It, it was quite detailed. And it states that you displayed this lack of candor, as it puts it, on four different occasions. I mean, that's not just, well, we didn't understand. I'm not sure I was distracted. That's four separate occasions in which the inspector general says, 
you were not forthcoming. You did not tell the truth. Yeah, and I would love to walk through every one of the points that I have for each one of those things that they've said in that report, but I can't do that to you with you this morning because of the lawsuit that we're about to file. Let's talk about the president. You, um, in some ways, it's, it's almost personal. He's tweeted about you, I think, more than 30 times. In one of the occasions, uh, you, the, in one of your conversations that you had that you relay in the book, you say that he referred to your wife and her losing campaign and called her a loser. What would you say to him right now if you had the opportunity? Well, I don't expect I'll get that opportunity, but um, I can't tell you, Savannah, how horrific it's been to have to endure the, the threats, the taunts, the bullying of the president of the United States in such a public way. I try not to take it personally, but it's very hard. Um, it's been incredibly tough on my family. My wife, who is a wonderful person, a pediatric emergency room physician, tried to help her community by running for office, and then to stand up there in front of thousands of people and perpetuate lies and slander about my wife and our family, it's been absolutely horrific. Do you have a political bias against the president? Because he suggests by virtue of the fact your wife running as a Democrat, receiving PAC money from, uh, from a, an organization that was essentially controlled by the governor of Virginia, a close ally of the Clintons. Do you have a political bias? Absolutely not. I did my job. I worked on the facts and the law that were in front of us at the time. There's absolutely no connection whatsoever with my wife's political activity and the decisions that I made at work. And I think that's been borne out by a in-depth investigation. You oversaw the Clinton email investigation. It has I subsequently did. come to light that someone you worked very close with, Lisa Page, who was yes. your lawyer, essentially, and someone else who worked on the case from the Department of Justice were having a romantic affair, um, an extramarital affair. It also came out in text messages that they had disparaged the president, that they had bashed him, that it demonstrated clear bias against the president. You oversaw that investigation. Did you ever see that kind of thing among Lisa Page and Peter Strzok? Not once. Not from Lisa Page, not from Pete, Pete Strzok, and not from anybody else on that team. One of their text messages mentions a meeting in Andy's office. Did any kind of conversation like that take place in your hearing? I don't recall the, the meeting or the conversation that they relate in their private text. Uh, it's one that I, a question I've been asked many times. We had many, many meetings between myself and those two and many others on the investigative team. So I don't recall the conversation they're referring to. But I can tell you this. Lisa Page and Pete Strzok are good people who served this country well. They made some poor decisions in their private lives and in terms of the communications they exchanged with each other. That's brought incredible grief and scrutiny on the FBI. I'm sure they regret that, but good people make bad decisions every day. I gotta go, but you, do you feel you'll be vindicated by the Mueller report? I anxiously await the results of uh, Director Mueller's work, and, and I hope that we all get to see that. I think uh, all Americans have a right to see the results of that work. Director Andrew McCabe, thank you for your thank time. You. Appreciate it. And again, the book is called The Threat.